What up, Bucks fans, NFL fans, and betting fans? This is Pewter Picks and Props, week four of the NFL season, brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the best place to play fantasy football and make some picks. I'm your host, Matt Matera from PewterReport.com. You could follow me at Matty, the number four underscore Matera. That's M A T. E-R-A, and I am thrilled to be back for another week of Pewter Picks and Props, also brought to you by PewterReport.com. Guys, I am feeling great because my record speaks for myself. Last week was my worst week, and I still went 4-3 and three on my NFL picks. I still went 3-1 and one on my player props, and I still went undefeated picking the Bucs game and the spread in the box games. Let's look at my overall record so far throughout the whole season. And granted, we're early. We'll have some ups and downs, but I'm loving this start going 14, 8, and 1 with my NFL picks. That includes the Buccaneers picks, which I'm also 6 and 0 in, as you can see. And I am 7 and 2 with my prop bets that you can put on underdog fantasy when it comes to the Bucs and their opponents. So I got a full slate of picks in this one to get into. Very, very excited. So let's get it rolling. And I just want to reiterate first, with my player props for Bucks versus Saints, which is going to be a heated, heated game. You know there's bad blood between both of these teams. I just want to reiterate with Underdog Fantasy, you can use it on Underdog Fantasy but you have to hit every single pick unless you do that insurance. If you like some of my picks, maybe not all of them, feel free to individually bet it on a different site where you can uh, you know, pick two out of three or three out of four, whatever I'm going with each week. So I just want to make that official for you guys. Don't feel the need to pick every single one, but if there's a couple of them that you like, then absolutely go for it. But like I said, let's get into this one. Here are the prop bets that I am choosing for Bucks versus Saints in the most heated rivalry in the NFC South. Ah, uh, fuck. I think I forgot to... I have the most prop picks for this box game that I have chosen since the season began, and we are only four weeks in. But I feel pretty, pretty, pretty good about these ones, as Larry David once said. Let's start with the Bucs players, and then we'll work our way to the enemy New Orleans Saints as the Bucs head to New Orleans for a 1 o'clock game. Let's start with quarterback Baker Mayfield, as you see on the screen. I have Baker Mayfield lower than getting sacked three times against the New Orleans Saints. Now, I know in the past... The Saints have had a great pass rush going up against Tampa Bay, but they've changed around some things on their defensive line. Marcus Davenport is no longer there. And if you look at it from the Bucs perspective, with Baker Mayfield, he's only been sacked three times this season. Once against Minnesota, where he admitted to himself that it was his fault. And then twice against the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday, which... You know, they have the, arguably the best defensive line in football. So to only get sacked twice in that game, actually, I look at it as a victory for the Bucs. So with a little bit more of a limited defensive line that the Saints have, the biggest matchup that you're going to have to look out for is Cam Jordan, who doesn't call this game a rivalry, even though he knows it is. He's still bitter from the Bucs beating him in the divisional round and winning that Super Bowl, which he has not won a Super Bowl yet. Uh, but the big matchup is Cam Jordan against Luke Gedeke. Odds are that New Orleans is going to line him up often against Gedeke. 
as he continues that move to right tackle after playing offensive guard last season. But we got to give credit where credit is due. So far in this season, Luke Gedeke has looked pretty good at right tackle. So we'll see how he stands up against Cam Jordan. Above all else, though, what works in this favor, picking lower than three sacks on Baker Mayfield and the Bucs offensive line, is the Bucs get the ball out quickly. One, they're going to run it quite, quite often, which means obviously you can't get sacked if you're running the football. And two, we've seen it's a couple drop steps, bam, throwing it. Roll the quarterback out, bam, throw it. Baker Mayfield has also shown so far that he's willing to tuck it and run when he needs to. I love Baker's escapability, and I love the opportunity that the Bucs are going to have with some injuries and suspensions to the Saints' defense in this game. So take lower than three sacks on Baker Mayfield in this game. My next pick, you just heard me talk about the running game. We'll skip over Mike Evans for a second because that's the main event. My next pick, and I've talked about this guy a lot over the past couple of weeks on Peter Picks and Props, presented by Underdog Fantasy, is Rashad White. Now, it's been very up and down with Rashad this season. I took him to hit the over or higher on his rushing yards in week one. That did not hit, but I picked lower for him against the Eagles on Monday Night Football, which did hit. So I'm one and one with my Rashad White picks. I also had a prop bet of him scoring a touchdown which he did in week two when the Bucs went up against the Chicago Bears and defeated them. I think I have a picture of shots somewhere scoring. Yep, right there. He scored that touchdown against the Bears. So the reason why I like this pick is the yards don't matter with this prop of higher than 14 and a half rushing attempts for Rashad White. He can get negative five yards per run. Now, he wouldn't continue to stay in the game if that's the case. But he can have a couple of duds where he only rushes for one yard or two yards or anything like that. As long as he is getting rushing attempts, that's the most important for this game. And so far, in early in the season, I know I keep saying it's early, but it must be reiterated. Rashad White has rushing attempts of 17, 17, and 14. So once again... The stat is higher than 14 and a half rushing attempts. He's already hit that in two games. And the one game he didn't hit it against was when the Bucs were far behind trailing against the Eagles and they had to throw the ball way more often. So if the Bucs can either keep the game close, have a lead, want to kill some time on the clock, Rashad White is going to get the rock. He's going to tote the rock. And the more successful he is, the more opportunities that he's going to get. Let's also look at the fact that so far this season, especially on Monday night's game, Rashad White got 91% of the snaps. The next closest was Sean Tucker, who only had 9% of the snaps. There's a huge disparity in the amount of plays on the field that the Bucs running backs are getting. Because remember, Chase Edmonds is uh, on IR with the knee injury. And Keyshawn Vaughn is not a fan favorite of the Bucs coaching staff right now. He was only elevated for the first time on Monday and didn't even get an offensive snap. So to say Rashad White is getting the bulk of the offensive snaps is an absolute understatement. He's the only guy playing running back for the Bucs at the moment. So Rashad White, higher than 14 and a half rushing attempts. Seems almost like a lock. I'm not going to say it is a lock because anything can happen. But I mean, the amount of snaps that he plays and the amount of times the Bucs are going to run the ball, because that's a whole nother factor into this, is Dave Canales, the Bucs offensive coordinator, literally came out and said, I'm going to be stubborn running the football. So even if the Bucs continue to struggle running it, Dave Canales likes that balance. And Rashad White is going to be the guy getting the football. So once again, higher than 14 and a half rushing attempts for Rashad White, the Bucks RB1. Now, the main event that everybody is looking for and hoping for is Mike Evans against Marshawn Lattimore. So I took both of these guys on my pewter picks and props this week in my pickums specifically. We'll start with Mike Evans, the greatest offensive player in Buccaneers history. I picked him just to score a touchdown, higher than half a rushing or receiving touchdown. Odds are it is going to be a receiving touchdown. 
And if you've been watching the Bucs, which if you're a fan of PeterReport.com, you've been watching every single game, Mike Evans has three touchdowns through three games. He is on pace to score 17 touchdowns on the season. And even when Mike struggled in the first half, he had a couple of drops. He dropped one in the end zone. When the Bucs were trying to make a comeback, and granted it was a little bit of a glorified garbage time situation, when the Bucs were at the goal line and they couldn't run it against Philly, who is Baker Mayfield looking for? Mike Evans. He's been the focal point of this offense. Chris Godwin has not been involved that much. Trey Palmer got one catch last week despite playing over 70% of the snaps. Kate Otten made one reception. It's been all Mike Evans in this Buccaneers offense. So I expect if the Bucs get to the red zone, that Baker Mayfield is going to be looking for Mike when he goes up against the Saints. And we all know this is a heated, heated battle. These two teams hate each other, and everyone remembers what happened last season. Mike Evans was backing up Tom Brady and Leonard Fournette. He got in a fight with Marshawn Lattimore. He got in a fight with Marcus May. Uh, May is suspended for this game, by the way, but Evans got suspended for the next game because of the fight that went on. So you know the Bucs are going to want to get Mike involved. We're going to see a ton of matchups between Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. So if Mike keeps getting the football, odds are he's going to be the number one target in the red zone as well. So I like Mike to score a touchdown against the Saints in this game. And I'm also taking Marshawn Lattimore four, oh, higher than four tackles and assists in this game. Um, if you look at the stats for Marshawn Lattimore, his last two games, he recorded five and then seven tackles. So he's been active taking down uh, whoever is in front of him. If he's going to be guarding Mike, whoever he's going to be guarding, I, I think the Bucs will be able to sustain a little bit of offense in this game, and especially if it's against Mike. If they force feed him, Lattimore is going to be involved. He's going to be as juiced up as Mike Evans is, so he's going to be flying around trying to make every single tackle that he can. I like the fact, again, that he's had a high number of tackles and uh, assisted tackles in the uh, the last two games for New Orleans, and therefore Marshawn Lattimore higher than four tackles and assisted tackles. You got to bank on the bad blood between Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Also, Carlton Davis and Michael Thomas. I don't have a prop bet on Thomas, but when two teams hate each other, they're battling for first place in the NFC South. We can all make a little bit of money off of it. My last pick for the pewter picks and props, and specifically with the pickums, I'm going with higher than one and a half field goals for Saints kicker Blake Groupie. I'm ho I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And this is kind of just going back to the same formula that I had with picking Jake Elliott on the Eagles higher than one and a half field goals. Uh, over the Bucs on Monday night's game. I think the Bucs defense is super steady, Eddie. You know, whether it's Devin White leading the way, we'll see how healthy he is. Um, obviously, Todd Bowles is going to have to make some decisions going up against the Saints offense, which it looks more and more like Jameis Winston is going to be starting for Tampa Bay. So Todd will have uh, a little creativity going up against him. But as we've seen, the Bucs have been very, very stingy in the red zone. So I can see New Orleans having a couple of okay drives. Bucks bend but don't break. And they have to settle for a Blake Groupie field goal. Groupie so far has a, had at least two field goal attempts in every single game that the Saints have played. So if he sticks to that number, if he goes two for two with his field goals, this prop bet should hit again. So... To round it all up one more time for my pickums this week. And feel free to do all of them. Feel free to do the insurance. Feel free to pick a couple and do an individual side bet. Whatever you want to do, totally fine with me. But I have Baker Mayfield lower than three sacks taken. Mike Evans higher than half a touchdown. So Mike to score a touchdown. Rashad White higher than 14 and a half rushing attempts. Marshawn Lattimore higher than four tackles and assists and Blake Rupi higher than one and a half field goals made. Before we look at the spread of Bucs Saints and the over-under, 
let's uh, watch a quick video about Underdog Fantasy to learn a little bit more about the Pick'ems and what goes on there. It's one of the funnest ways to do a single fantasy game based on the player stats. You just have to pick at least two picks, uh, one from each team of the game that uh, you're interested in viewing. You pick the higher or lower on the stats. A quarterback, it's passing yards. Running back, it's rushing yards, and so on. The more that you pick, the higher amount of uh, doubles and triples that you can get in terms of maximum payout. The important thing in all of this is to remember that uh, if you want to play that insurance, say you make five picks, you hit four of the five, you'll still get a payout. It won't be as high as you know the five-time payout by picking all five. But if you don't do insurance and you hit four or five, then you don't win any money at all. So sometimes that insurance can be quite valuable with these pickums in underdog fantasy. But it's so much fun to do. You could do the rivals as well, where you compare two guys and say, I think this player is going to have the higher amount of snaps uh, or uh, stats in this game. Excuse me. Um, they got a ton of in-game tournaments, playoff pools as well. Ton of great stuff going on at Underdog Fantasy. So use the promo code Pewter, that's P-E-W-T-E-R, and get a deposit bonus when you sign up with Underdog Fantasy. One more time, that's Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R. Remember, I'm feeling good about my pick. 7-2 and two with that props record. And 14, 8, and 1 with my NFL picks, including going undefeated 6 and 0 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season. So, without further ado, my picks for Bucks Saints with the spread and the over under. I am picking the Bucks in this one. I actually think they're going to win outright. You can check out my prediction on the uh, Peter Report preview that's coming out later this afternoon on Friday. But I have the Bucks three and a half. In this game, my anytime touchdown is Mike Evans. I don't have to go too much into detail on that one because I also picked him on underdog fantasy. But Mike keeps scoring, and why would I not pick against Mike when he scored in every single game? So let's get back to focus on the plus three and a half for the Bucks against the Saints. If you look at the history of the Bucks and Saints against the spread, it's uh, it's gone back and forth over the past couple of years, especially with that over under of 39 and a half. If you go back to 2020, because that's when this really heated up when Tom Brady got here. Uh, it's gone over, under, under, and that under was in the divisional round of the playoffs. Then in 2021, it went over, under. So both regular seasons, they went over, under, over, under, under in the playoff game. And then last season, it was two unders in uh, the Bucks for Saints games. So I think everything's going to come back around again with the overs hitting this time since both unders hit last season and they've been pretty up and down with the over under going back and forth. So I, I, I like the over in this one because it's very low as well. It's 39 and a half, depending on when you get it. The lines do change here and there. That is the lowest over under total that the Bucs have had this season. They had 40 and a half, 41 and a half against the Bears, and they did hit that number. Um, the Saints have played very close games this season. Their widest margin of victory or defeat was, I believe, three points. So we're talking about very, very close matchups uh, in these games. I think there's a lot of deciding factors that that could make a big difference. Most notably, with Jameis Winston playing, obviously Devin White and Jameis Winston have some history. But I think the Bucs will be able to get enough stops on New Orleans, even with Jamel Dean likely out of this game. They do get Carlton Davis returning, which is super important in this one. But we've seen it before with Jameis Winston. He's very prone to turning the football over. So I think the Bucs have a big turnover in this game and win that turnover battle, which has been so important with guys like Baker Mayfield. When Baker has been clean, not turning the ball over, the Bucs are 2-0 and when they win the turnover battle. They're 2-0 and on the season. They tied the turnover battle against the Eagles, and that's why they lost. But I think James is going to throw more interceptions and turn the ball over more than Baker will, playing a little bit of hero ball. And I have a feeling that Zion McCollum might end up with an interception. He's going to get a lot of playing time with Jamel Dean out, Carlton Davis taking on one side. 
And another big thing in this is, yeah, the pass rush wasn't great for the Bucs last week or last game, but the Saints offensive line is a little vulnerable. Cesar Ruiz has a concussion, doesn't look like he may play in this one. Ryan Ramchick has struggled, and he's usually stout as ever. Um, Trevor Penning has struggled this season. Guys, the Saints have allowed 12 sacks through three games. That's four sacks a game. That's the reason why Derek Carr isn't playing, or most likely isn't playing on Sunday. So I think the Bucs will be able to get home. The outside linebacker room can't be happy with only one QB hit in their last game. They're going to take advantage of a weaker Saints offensive line and get to Jameis and force him to turn the ball over uh, a number of times, <laughs> excuse me, in this game. So I, I like the the Bucks pass rush in this. I like the fact that the defense is going to keep them in every single game. And that's why Bucks plus three and a half with everything I just mentioned, along with the Saints playing in a number of close games, even if the Bucks don't win money line, Plus three and a half. I think it's going to be very tight, contested game. We've seen this a lot last season with the Bucs. Even that 20 to 10 victory in New Orleans last year was very close until the end of the fourth quarter. So give me Bucks plus three and a half. I like the over 39 and a half. I think we're going to get a bounce back game from the Bucks offense in general, whether it's Mike Evans improving again because of the feud he's got going on, whether it's Baker Mayfield improving from some missed throws that he had last game. The Bucs are going to be able to run the ball better against New Orleans, who's allowed over 90 yards per game this season. They have a better chance going up against New Orleans, running the football a little bit more, which will open everything else up in this offense. And there's also a couple of injuries for the Saints on that defensive side of the football. Paulson Adebo, one of their defensive backs, doesn't look like he's going to play. And then... Marcus May is suspended. He was third on the team in tackles. See, Marcus May is the one throwing the punch at Mike Evans. So, you know, Mike's going to want to score on New Orleans again. But Marcus May is suspended. And he was the third leading tackler for the New Orleans Saints. So that's a big piece of the puzzle for the Saints defense, which is the reason why, <clears throat> excuse me, that they've been able to stay in these games and win some of these games this season. So I just expect a bounce back performance from the Buccaneers' offense. I mean, they're pissed off by the way they played against the Eagles. It was not good. They only scored 11 points. That one touchdown they had was kind of in garbage times. But they missed a couple of plays here and there. They missed things by an inch. The throw to Devin Tompkins, the drop by Mike Evans in the end zone. This is a different opponent. This is a weaker opponent. And I don't think the Bucs are panicking because they lost to the reigning NFC champion. So give me... Bucks plus three and a half. Give me the over of this one because it's very, very low. When the over is like minus, or I should say minus, when the over is like 44, 45, 46, take the under in those ones. When the over is very low for the Bucks, hovering right around 40, 39, take the over when it comes to that. So I, I like over 39 and a half for this one. I think the Bucks can put up enough points even though they are going on the road. So those are my Bucks picks, specifically with the player props and the uh, the spread and the over under. One last time, there's my uh, pewter picks in the pickums this week. Got five, so we'll see if I can continue that run. And I'm taking Mike Evans anytime touchdown. Bucks plus three and a half, and the over of thirty nine and a half. Now. Bucks don't play until Sunday. Well, a lot of people are playing until Sunday. Had to wait for Monday last week. I couldn't wait to get back to picking because, again, I went four and three. That wasn't ideal. I had better weeks in week one and week two, but still ended up as a winner. So I want to increase how I did last week with even more winners. One more time, there's my records for this season, 14-8-1 on NFL picks. Let's get to... My picks this week, I have five, including a lock of the week. There's a number real quick. Let me get that logo off so everybody can see. I got Dolphins plus two and a half, Cowboys minus six and a half, over 45 and a half in Rams Colts, the under of 46 and a half in Panthers Vikings, and my lock of the week, Chiefs minus eight and a half 
going to MetLife Stadium to play against the New York Jets. Let's start with Miami against the Buffalo Bills. Probably the highly highest coveted matchup this week. Miami scored 70 points last week. They are an absolute juggernaut. I think it's crazy that they are getting two and a half points against Buffalo. I know Buffalo has played much better, but one of the Bills' best safeties, Jordan Poyer, is not playing in this game. I think the Dolphins still won't have any issues moving the football. They keep this one close if they don't win it outright. Give me the Dolphins plus two and a half. Next, I have a bit of a, not revenge game, but just taking their anger out on the opponent type of game. Dallas Cowboys, the home team against New England Patriots. I'm taking the Cowboys minus six and a half over New England. We all saw the biggest upset of the week, the Cardinals defeating the Cowboys on the road in Arizona. But now Dallas comes back home. I think they are pissed off by the way that they lost last week against a game that everyone thought they were going to win. So they take it out on the New England Patriots who – have not looked good this season. I know they won last week against the lowly New York Jets, but the Patriots are not moving the ball on offense, and I don't know how much New England can keep the Cowboys from scoring, from reaching the end zone. The Cowboys are 2-1 and one against the spread this season, but a very interesting stat that I looked up. Last season, following a game where the Cowboys lost outright, didn't matter about the spread, just when they lost, they were 5-0 and last season covering the spread in games after they were defeated in a regular season game. So I think that stat is going to continue. They are going to be angry. And unfortunately for the Patriots, they are on the receiving end of losing in a terrible and miserable way. Next up, I'm looking at the points in this one. Rams, Colts, the over. 45 and a half. I understand that Anthony Richardson is coming back as the starting quarterback for the Colts. The Rams and Colts are both two and one against the over. And the Rams are getting back on track on offense. They scored 30 points a week ago. The Colts, it's a home game for them. And when you play in a dome on in that type of stadium, I think the players play a little bit faster. It's a little bit easier to score for whatever reason. I don't really have the stats to back that up. But I like both teams being able to score. I, I know the Rams can uh, do some things on defense with Aaron Donald. Maybe they get uh, some type of takeaway to either put themselves up in good field position or maybe a pick six, a scoop and score, something of that nature. So give me over 45 and a half for Rams Colts. Taking the under in this next game of Panthers-Vikings, that under is 45 and a half. Now, when I said the Rams and Colts were both 2-1 and one against the over, the Panthers and the Vikings are both 2-1 and one against the under. I think it's important to remember that Bryce Young is returning in this game. The Panthers have only averaged 13 points per game in the two games that uh, Bryce Young was the starter in. So... I think Carolina is actually better with Andy Dalton right now, but I totally understand Bryce Young is your starting quarterback of the future, your number one pick. So I think he's going to continue to struggle moving the football. The Vikings defense has not been great this season. However, Brian Flores is going to blitz the crap out of Bryce Young. And although they've allowed 31 and 28 points in their last two games, respectively, that was against the Eagles and the Chargers. When they played the Bucs in week one, they only allowed 20 points. So I think you're going to see that number shift back to how they played against the Bucs. And the Panthers are the, the strong point of their defense, of their team is the defense. So I like the Panthers to get a couple of stops in the red zone, hold them to field goals. Give me the under in Panthers Vikings 45 and a half. My last pick of the week. This is my lock of the week. I feel great about this because one team is the best in the league. The other, without their starting quarterback, is hands down at least the worst offense in the league. And this one's on prime time on Sunday night football. I am picking the Chiefs 
minus eight and a half against the New York Jets because they have Zach Wilson as their starting quarterback. And let me say this loud and clear. Let me tell this to everybody watching this show, Peter Picks and Props. The New York Jets offense with Zach Wilson as starting quarterback might be the worst offense in the history of football. Zach Wilson is setting football back by 100 years. There has not been a worse offense since the forward pass was invented. Zach Wilson is scared to throw the ball down the field. All he does is check it down four yards. I get that the Chiefs have an awesome offense, but they might slow down a little bit against the New York Jets defense because the Jets defense is unreal. But I don't see how the Jets score at all. The Chiefs have a great defense with Chris Jones. The most entertaining thing in this game is going to be watching Travis Kelsey because he is the talk of the NFL right now. Him and Taylor Swift, I absolutely love it. I think it's great. I'm happy for the both of them. Taylor Swift was at the last game. Look at her. She's having an awesome time watching the Chiefs beat up on the Bears. Travis Kelsey scored a touchdown in that game. I can't believe she is going to this game. I understand she wants to support Travis Kelsey. But she has to watch Zach Wilson. Is that her face saying, oh my God, I have to watch the Jets? That's probably what it's going to look like after watching Zach Wilson throw the football. If he even attempts to throw the football, the Jets might just run it a thousand times. He looked bad against Dallas. He looked even worse against the Patriots. The only thing the Jets got going for them, besides their defense, is that they're going to be wearing these throwback uniforms again, which look absolutely awesome. But the most exciting thing about this game is going to be that Taylor Swift is there uh, rooting on, cheering on uh, Travis Kelsey and uh, maybe <laughs> maybe this game goes down as the worst game of the season. I really think it has the potential to be a laughing stop, stock, embarrassment, just awful game for the New York Jets where their hands are tied and they have to start another quarterback. I kind of hope that happens. Because the Jets have been in the face of America for too long without Aaron Rodgers. They have to make a change. I'm shocked that this number is minus eight and a half. I'm shocked. I would put the line, honestly, at like 15. Eight and a half? Are you crazy? There's no way the Jets are scoring against the Chiefs. I don't need any stats. I don't need to look at the history of the teams against the spread. I'm going to be watching because I... I Taylor Swift is fun. I think she's awesome. I'm going to be watching for Taylor Swift and fantasy football and gambling reasons-wise. Not because the Jets are playing. The Chiefs, minus 8.5. That's my lock of the week. One more time, I'll uh, put all the picks again. I got Dolphins, plus 2.5. Cowboys, minus 6.5. Rams, Colts, over 45.5. Panthers, Vikings, under 46.5. And and my lock of the week is Chiefs minus eight and a half. And last again, uh, my pewter picks and props. The Pickums, Blake Group, Groupie, higher than one and a half field goals. Baker Mayfield, less than three sacks. Mike Evans, touchdown. Rashad White, over 14 and a half rushing attempts. Marshawn Lattimore, higher than four tackles and assists. I like the Bucks plus three and a half. The over... 39 and a half to go with a Mike Evans touchdown. If you've been following my picks, you've been winning money. I want you guys to win more this week. That's going to do it for me. My name is Matt Matera from pewterreport.com. Feel free to follow me for picks and all my stuff covering the Bucks on my Twitter at Matty, the number four underscore Matera, M A T E R A. On Instagram, I'm just at Matty underscore Matera, so without the four in that one. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Cannot thank you guys enough. Really appreciate it. That's going to do it for me this week. Good luck, everybody. Let's win some more money.